This month's interview is a super special one because it's my amazing line manager, Emma Quick. She is a senior marketing manager at Bonnier Books UK in the children's division. Hope you found this useful and enjoy. Hi, I'm Emma Quick. I am senior marketing manager for children's at Bonnier Books UK, which means I work across five imprints. Uh, Templar Books, which is picture books, Big Picture Press, which is beautiful non-fiction books, Piccadilly Press, which is middle grade titles, and Hotkey Books, which is teen and YA, and then the last one is Studio Books, who publish a whole breadth of trend-led titles. What I do on a day-to-day -day basis um, completely varies from day to day. Um, I'm really lucky in that my job is completely different every day um, but the things that sort of generally happen every day is we look at social media so I manage a couple of social media accounts I manage the TikTok account and um, so I check in with those I look after lots of advertising so I check in with all of my digital advertising um, I work really closely with my team and I also manage Eleanor um, who is brilliant and um, so I do a lot of checking in with her I talk a lot with authors I'm giving them campaign plans I'm giving them advice on social media creating assets for them I'm doing a lot of talking with my hands also creating um lots of exciting sort of bookmarks proofs adverts yeah it gets me really creative so I did English literature and French at university I have always loved reading and that sort of for me was was a really exciting degree um, and when I graduated I had no idea what to do next I really didn't know what I wanted to do so I took an admin job just at a local a local company which was actually a small record label which is very interesting and quite fun for what I thought was going to be just a standard admin job and then I went traveling for six months and did the whole gap year thing one of the reasons I had never really considered publishing before was because of it being so London centric and London just felt too big and then when I went traveling I was like oh maybe maybe London is a possibility and thought you know just get a job in publishing now that's fine so started applying was very optimistic uh very quickly had my dreams crushed um no I didn't it was uh it was definitely a steep learning curve learning how competitive it is to get into publishing I took a job at a small literary magazine um it was so small that there were only sort of three of us working on the magazine full time that was actually really great for me because I was hired as marketing research executive. That meant my job covered everything from like the marketing, so like social media and things, sales, advertising, editorial work, online stuff, website management. I got to interview a bunch of incredible authors and it gave me the opportunity to sort of try out lots of different things and also gave me the chance to go, yes, marketing is actually what I want to do and I really love marketing and they were the bits always that I found really fun and eventually after many many months of applying and going I'm never going to get a job in publishing it's just not going to happen I managed to get a job with Macmillan Children's Books and I spent a couple of years with them uh, before I moved to Bonnier so it's been a really great experience and, and kids publishing is absolutely amazing. What I love most about working in children's books specifically is it's always changing, it's always different. I thought that was such an exciting place to move into um, and an exciting role to move into. It was something I hadn't really considered until the job came up and then I thought about it and I was like oh but the cool thing about kids books is you are marketing to parents and adults but you're also marketing to kids and you're also marketing to teachers and you have to be so creative and flexible with the way that you're reaching all of these different people and I think that's just so interesting and it really keeps you on your toes and that's kind of why I thought yeah kids something I could do so also I'm a big kid at heart so that worked nicely for me. I think one of the big things for working in both marketing and both and in children's books is you've got to be creative. You've got to have a bit of like zhuzh about you because it requires so much energy and excitement because you can't be dry and not creative when you're deciding what colour unicorn poo is on a cover. There's loads of really strange conversations that you get to have and you just have to have a bit of fun with it. Um, you need a really good 
knowledge of what's happening in the world, um, of what trends there are at the moment, what platforms are popular, where children are, where parents are, what are they concerned about, what are kids using, what are kids worried about, um, and just knowing all of those things so you can bring that knowledge to your role. So just having a real close eye on, on trends of the moment and who's popular and what's popular. And then in terms of like really solid skills, you also need to have a good eye for design if you're not a little bit of dabbling in um, Photoshop, that's always helpful. Uh, you need to be a damn good copywriter. So being able to write creative copy for social and it really comes across in like the cover letter in your CV um, if you're not a good copywriter. So, so definitely worth working on your writing skills. And then also budgeting. A lot of marketing is managing a budget and being really keen on, on knowing the numbers. Speaking of knowing the numbers, social media obviously is a massive part of our job, but you can't just be like, oh yeah, I want to post this photo. I want to post this video. You have to like look at the analytics and you have to love the analytics. Like if you don't love the analytics, marketing is not for you. Um, we spend a lot of time looking at those numbers and how they reflect our growth and how they, they sort of contribute to what content we create for every book. Something I wish I knew sooner is something that I say to my team all the time and I even had little coasters made for them um, and it is books not bodies. The brilliant thing about publishing is that everyone really really loves books, like really loves books but almost too much because sometimes we can kind of get so stressed about something not happening or something happening it's really easy to forget that you're just it's it is just books and it's not no one's gonna die if it goes wrong or something doesn't happen or a social post doesn't go out on time so I think that for me is just something that I wish I'd learned much earlier in my career just because it helps you breathe and put it into perspective and and keep that balance between your work life and your home life and just yeah it's definitely one to remember, books, not bodies. I contact most often um, the marketing and PR team. I mean, I work, the, the, the interesting thing about uh, marketing is you work so closely with all of the departments from editorial to sales to production. For us as a team, we work so closely because not only do you work with the PR team on every campaign and you want to make sure your marketing and PR is like super integrated. So I love using the other amazing creative marketers on my team to bounce ideas off, to come up with campaigns, to sort of test copy and say, does this look weird or does this one look better? And just getting the opinions of everyone because marketing is one of those things where it's like pretty subjective and it gives you the opportunity to sort of work with other people and get ideas and it's so inspiring so I'm really lucky to work with such a talented team who who do love collaborating with each other so much and even if it's your campaign you know that you've all had a hand in it in making it a success. My favourite part of my job is that it is always changing and it is always different I'm really lucky to work for Bonnier and they really encourage sort of innovation and experimenting and like seeing if we can get something to work and if it doesn't then it doesn't. Specifically in marketing you can't and specifically in kids marketing you really have to give things a go and just experiment and see what happens. TikTok is something that I sort of look after. It's been a bit of my baby for the past couple of years. TikTok 10 years ago just wasn't a thing. Five years ago wasn't really a thing. Snapchat 20 years ago wasn't a thing. You have to be really on it in terms of what the trends are and where kids are spending their time and where young people are spending their time um, to make sure that you really reach that audience in an effective way and in a way that feels authentic to them. You have to be so creative to do that. You can't just sort of put something out there because it's not going to work. You have to try new things and experiment. And I think that's what I, I love most about my job is just that I'm always able to like experiment and try new things. The most challenging part of my job is probably a children's book specific thing, which is that if you are not David Williams, Roald Dahl or Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling, you find it's so much harder to get children to read your book 
not necessarily because of the children that's quite often because the adults are the ones buying the books and the adults see those names and they're what they know um so actually getting the cut through there is so much harder um so obviously a lot of what we do is sort of raising awareness with those gatekeepers and making them aware that you know there's some really really chuffing talented authors out there who write these incredible magical and funny stories that just don't get the space and it's so challenging and disappointing for like working at a book publisher when you see these these sort of books which get so much attention and then you find these smaller books and you're just like oh but you should really read this instead read some middle grade from the past like three years there's some incredible stuff out there i have got so many interesting stories there's so many of me just like spilling things down famous authors and i just probably shouldn't talk about that ever again um but i will instead go for the teacher tea break um with connie hook this was um the biggest digital event i had ever organized and i worked really closely with um, molly holt on our pr team to set up this event and we were zooming to thirty thousand ish students in a single sort of stream on that day and uh, we were doing it in the office with connie hook and she was at home and we were in the office together sort of running it and doing the tech side of it we set it off it was all running very smoothly everything was going wonderfully and then about 20 minutes into the event the fire alarm went off in the office building we had the mo little moment of okay do we actually have to evacuate is this going to be okay no everyone's evacuating it's a real fire alarm cool cool okay so uh, we knew that we had to go down four flights of stairs, that we were going to lose the Wi-Fi. Eleanor, this was actually her second day and I was very much like, Eleanor, hotspot time. Um, and I had to walk down this stairwell with this laptop to my ear because I was ch in charge of the slides. Walking down this stairwell, evacuating, surrounded by all of these people in our office who we don't really know because they don't work at Bonnier. And trying to change the slides on time without losing connection without losing control of the slides because if we lost connection everyone all of the schools would have been kicked out of the event and then stood outside the building in the freezing cold still doing this everyone looking at you like why has she got a laptop to her in? there's an excellent photo from that day um but we didn't lose connection connie did not even realize that it had happened um the teachers didn't realize it had happened but it was a real testament to as a team how unflappable we are um, because it happened no one panicked everyone was just like right okay what we're we gonna do this is fine we're just gonna go for it so eleanor did get thrown in at the deep end on her second day but you know kids books there's always chaos I guess one thing that I have learned about the publishing industry since joining is that it's incredibly small, like really small. As standard, I'm always like, you should be kind to everyone you meet because apart from anything, particularly the people you're working with, if you if you are kind to someone and you're nice to someone, if you then have something tricky that you have to say to them or you have an issue or like criticism to give, uh, to give them, they're way more likely to actually take it on board and take it seriously if you've previously been nice to them up to that point. I just don't think it hurts to be nice to anyone, but particularly in publishing when you just don't know when your paths are gonna cross again and you could end up working with someone sort of down the line in a couple of years, having made that good impression where you've been kind, you've been nice, you've helped someone out. It really just is the way to go. biggest piece of advice I have uh, to anyone trying to get into children's books specifically is read some children's books from like the past three to five years. Just read recent children's books because if you come to an interview uh, at a children's book publishers and you're like, my favourite children's book is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and that's it. That's great but also doesn't demonstrate that you have any knowledge of what's going on in the children's world. Read, again, I've, I said it earlier, but read books by these incredible middle grade picture book authors, YA authors. There are truly some incredible 
books out there and read more widely within the children's sphere because that's the only way you're going to get to know the market. My more marketing specific advice would be don't just talk about books or look at, at the books that are being published by, by publishers. Look at the campaigns that they're doing around those books for marketing. So are you seeing adverts for that book? What are those adverts looking like? What bits of copy are they using? Where are they linking to? Can you see display materials in Waterstones? Like what else are they doing around that book? So it's in your cover letter, don't just write about, oh, you published this book and I really liked it. Say you published this book and it was so incredible. The campaign had this aspect and I saw it on Instagram and TikTok and I saw you did some influencer campaign and you can be more specific about what that looked like. And it's, it's thinking about the campaign and the work that goes around the book to make it a big book rather than just being like, oh, this is one of your biggest books. If you can show an awareness of how a publisher is is making a bu the buzz around a book big, it just demonstrates that you've got a better own awareness. I actually don't think there is any one book that everyone should read because I have a lot of friends who say they don't like reading and I think that's just because they're not reading the right books for them. I'm going to cop out and say everyone should read books that they're interested in but I will be I'll give you the last book that I read which was incredible. I read A Little Life. I have never read a book that made me cry harder so if you want to have your heart broken and also read like a really incredible book, read that one, but also oh, maybe don't read that one because it really does like break your heart.